joined us tonight, whether you're in the room or watching online, why don't you get up on your feet as we go into this time of praise and worship. Come on. Excuse me for a minute, but I have got a song to sing. It might not be a key, but it's from my heart. No one else can tell it. What the Lord has done for me This might take all day No, I better start right now Things might get loud It might get loud Come on, sing with us Hit me coming down, down, down It might get loud It might get loud Just glad to be a child of God. Cause when I think of where I could be, should be, would be, if he had said it. I got a praise on the inside of can be denied.
around it. We'll just lift a shout of praise to God. There's nothing our God can do. In Psalm 22, verse 3, it says, God inhabit the praises of his people. That means when you take time to worship, that means when you take time to praise, you invite God into your situation. And when God decides to come in your situation, he comes with all his power. He comes with all his might. That means your situation ain't got no power over God. God has power over your situation. I don't know about you, but if you have a testimony, I dare you to take three seconds. Open up your mouth. Open up your arms and shout to God. God has been good to you. God has been good to you. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Father God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, God, for everything you've done in our life, God. You know, there's nothing that can compare to you, God. No matter what we've been through, you've been there. You've been more powerful. You helped us through it, God. You got us through so many situations, God. And right now we come with our situation once again and say there's nothing our God can do. There's nothing our God can do. No matter what it is over our situation, over our finances, over our family, over our country, there's nothing that our God can do. So tonight, God, we invite you into our situation. We invite you into this room, God, and have your way, God. We want you. We want nothing else but you tonight. So we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. And the whole church say. And the church say. Come on, come on. Well, welcome to Rendezvous. My name is Mark David. And I'm so honored to be here with you guys. And just like we always, we're about to go to the time of FaceTime. Why don't you take some time, 30 seconds, look at the person on your left, on your right. Just say, I'm happy to see you. And let's ask them a question. What are you looking forward to this summer? Come on, let's go to the time of FaceTime. This is Mark, and we'd like to just welcome you and say hi. Welcome to the Rendezvous. If this is your very first time, we consider you a VIP, very important people. If you can just take this card on your seat, fill it out, and at the end of service, you can take it to our tent so we can just officially welcome you to the Rendezvous. To Rendezvous, please help me give a hand to our first-time guests. Come on. We just love having new people here to connect with. And speaking of connecting, what better way to connect? We're having Connect Group back this yes. week. Come on, y'all. Connect Group season is back. And if you don't know what a Connect Group is, it's a safe space to find your circle. Because here at Trinity and Rendezvous, we believe that you need community for this life. Yes. Life be lifing. And you need a community to go through this. So why don't you text Connect Group to 66866 or meet us in the lobby to learn more about our Connect Group. We can't wait to plug you in. Yes, and Mark and I are leading a connect group this season together, as you can see on the screens. Um, <laughs> so we will be happy to see you guys this Saturday for our connect group. Yes. Another way that we can get connected here at the Rendezvous is if you can join us at the Hype. At 7 p.m. every Tuesday, we have the Hype going on in the chapel right across. And it's just a time where we all come together, we get encouragement, we pray, and we just get hyped and ready for service. Right before the hype, though, we do have tacos back, guys. Let's go. Taco Tuesday is back. So from 6 to 7 in the lobby, we have tacos. And then at 7, the hype. And then you join us here for rendezvous service. Just come for the tacos at this point, y'all. It's free food. Anyways, okay. Okay. for our next announcement, y'all, we have Vood Conference coming back this year. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited for this year's conference. Um, and we have a quick promo video we want to show you before we go to any detail. Why don't you just pay attention to the screen for this quick promo video? As his time on earth was drawing to a close, Jesus uttered a statement which revealed his intention for the future of humanity. You are Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. These 
these words of Jesus carry with them great importance and comfort. The church is messy because it is human, yet the church is miraculous because it is divine. This is the mystery of God at work. Our lives are the living stones laid down for the master builder. And upon this rock, he will build his church. Come on, what an amazing video. Yo, we are so excited to partner with Vu Church. And they're going to give us, a, like, this prize, the ticket is almost $300, but God is good, somebody. And we have a, a special prize for Trinity and Rendezvous, $159. So we want to invite you guys. Just come and, and just come have fun with us. There's amazing preachers from Mike Todd, Pastor T. We have Rich Jr. Wilkerson. We have so many great speakers who's going to be there, and we want to invite you and just, just invite you to just come along and have a good time. So if you want to know more about it, you can text VU Conference to 66866 or just come talk to us in the lobby and we can't wait to plug you in. Yes, and another way that we can um, continue on in our worship tonight is through our giving. On your seat, you have an envelope. You can either give through um, cash or check. Make your check out to Trinity Church or if you'd like, the easiest way you can text Trinity Miami to 77977. Rendezvous, please help me welcome Yolani as she encourages us in our giving. Good evening, Rendezvous. Today I'm going to be reading from Luke 16, verse 10, verses 10 through 13, and it says, One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much, and one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. If then you have not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. And I love this scripture because it really just talks about the parable of the dishonest manager who was caught wasting his possessions. And I just, I, as I was reading through the chapter, I'm like, man, God, let that never be me. Let that never be that I can't even be trusted with riches and possessions that are not even mine because then how am I going to react or how am I going to walk in what you have given me if you can't I can't even be trusted with what is someone else's and so my prayer today is that as you give surrender your heart and give it fully give it trusting God knowing that hey Lord I'm gonna I'm going to surrender the area of my finances because I know that in order to enlarge my capacity, in order to enlarge my territory, in order to enlarge my ministry, that I have to first give and store well what you have given me. And so today, just be encouraged that when you give, you're storing it right. That is being that is starting something right when you give it onto the Lord, knowing that He could do exceedingly and abundantly more than you can ever ask, think, or imagine. And so, join me in prayer today, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that we can give back to you, Father, what is already ours, what is already yours what you have entrusted us with, Father, that because we are your children, we have an inheritance from you, Lord, the best inheritance that we can ever have. So, Father, today as we give, I pray that you would open our hearts, Lord God, and that you would help us to give righteously, help us to give with a good attitude, knowing that it is yours and that you are just saving it up for what you have for us, Lord God. We thank you for your goodness, and we thank you for your provision. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. We're going to worship. So join us in a time of worship. Thank you. 
Some of us are in this room, and we don't really know what this means. What does it mean for the Holy Spirit to come fall afresh on us? And what is the Holy Spirit, what does that mean for Him to access into our lives? I know we've been kind of going over this the past couple weeks, and whether or not you have been a part of this or not, this journey that we've been on, learning about the Holy Spirit, I want you to know that He's real. I want you to know that He's here. I want you to know that regardless of whether or not you believe in Jesus, regardless of whether or not you believe in the Trinity, whether you believe in the Holy Spirit or not, He's here, and He's available to you, and He's just waiting for you just to say yes to Him. And so there's nothing special that I can do tonight. There's nothing special that the worship team can do. Yes, we could play specific chords. We could have certain lights. We could give you a hundred more tacos. There's nothing that we can do that manufactures the presence of God. We try our best to create an atmosphere where the Holy Spirit is welcome. And the only reason that we can say that he's here is because our team has prayed for you. We can say that our team has come together. We've prayed, we've invited him in. And the only reason he's here is not because we're in this special building, but because he, he resides in a lot of us in this room. And so I want to encourage you tonight, wherever you're at on your spiritual journey, as we're about to open up the Word of God together, just be open. I know you're already here, you're walking in, maybe someone dragged you here, maybe you feel like you're in this place because you have nowhere else to go. And I want to let you know that even if this is your last resort, just know you found the best option. 
So, God, we thank you tonight for who you are. We thank you that you're in this place, Lord. I pray that, Holy Spirit, you would be in this place tonight. We invite you into our hearts individually. It's your name we pray. We all said amen, amen. Why don't you take a moment before you take your seat. Greet a few people around you. Tell them they look good. Tell them they smell good. If they don't smell good, you know, maybe you got to offer them a mint or something. You know what I'm saying? Maybe let's just be generous in the house. You know what I mean? Glad you're here. Wow. Well, happy Tuesday, everyone. How you feeling? Said happy Tuesday, everyone. How you feeling? Hey, I'm excited to be here. Hopefully you are. Did, did, did anyone get a chance to have a, maybe a taco or two? Did anyone get an opportunity to have a taco or two? No one did? Okay, so I can have the extras then afterwards. No, I'm just kidding. Well, every Tuesday from now on, maybe uh, from 6 to 7, we'll have tacos here. And uh, maybe that's been your, uh, your, the thing that's held you back from coming here a little bit earlier. Is maybe you're like, hey, I just got to eat something before I come. Well, we have food right here for you. So I hope you're able to enjoy that. But man, I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, you could be at home uh, getting ready in about 30 minutes for the Miami Heat and the Boston Celtics to play game one of the Eastern Conference Finals, uh, but you decide to be here instead. I had a friend, he calls me, he goes, I go, hey man, like you coming to church tonight? He goes, nah. He goes, I'm going to buy tickets. I'm going to be no further than row 10 at the game tonight. And I said, well, I'll be, no f I'll be uh, exactly row zero here on the stage tonight, uh, the best night of the week, best place to be on a Tuesday night, the rendezvous. So uh, glad that you guys are here. Decided there's a lot of things you can do on a Tuesday night, but the fact that you're here, we're honored. This is an incredible community. And at the end again, I know we saw that the connect groups, uh, were, we don't have to put it up yet. At the very end, I'm gonna put, we're going to put those uh, connect groups back up. And the reason why we believe that connect groups is important is like, just like Mark said, is we can't do life by ourselves. I know that some of us, like, you're in here, you come on Tuesday night, and when you leave this room, it's like, who do I have? I don't even have a community of people to love me, pray for me. I need that. And that's what connect groups are for. And so we have, like, about 30 uh, connect groups total uh, at, at all of Trinity Church. But there are three specific ones that are designated towards rendezvous. The reason why they're called rendezvous groups is because young adults lead them. But also we go over the message that we talk about on a Tuesday night. So Maybe like, I want to conversate about that more. I mean, I know DJ just kind of stood up there talking about it for 35 or 40 minutes, but I want to have a discussion about this. That's going to be a great opportunity for you to get connected to other people, talk about the message, and just really, it's really all about community. So we'll throw that up at the, at the end, but we'll, every, every point that I have from this sermon, uh, questions that I ask, will even be things that we're asking in our uh, connect group. So I encourage you, if you've never been a part of one, to at least try it out. But we're here tonight. We're here on a Tuesday, and uh, we're going to open up to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, if you, or sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and if you have your Bibles, you can open up there. Uh, this is in the New Testament. This is Paul writing it to the a church in Corinth. That's why it's called Corinthians. And so if you have your Bibles, you can turn there. Otherwise, uh, there is a, a Bible app that's on your phone, too. You can go to the App Store. It's called just Bible. It's like a U version Bible app. What's crazy, they have like all types of versions of the Bible. That's because like when you translate something from one language to another, there's not really ever a perfect version. So maybe it says the same things, but in kind of different ways. Uh, but someone earlier today, actually, I was asking a question about the message, and she speaks like total Hebrew. So she literally pulled out the Bible app, and you can like read the Bible in Hebrew on the Bible app. I was like, wow, so it doesn't even just have versions in English. It also got all the different other languages. So whatever you're into, uh, that's a great way for you to have it on your phone. But if not, it's going to come up on the screens. I'm going to go ahead and read it. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, starting at verse 3. It says, Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, we also, our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is, far, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. The title of my message tonight is Comforted 
versus comfortable. Comforted versus comfortable. God, we thank you for who you are. We invite your presence into this place. May we leave a little bit differently than when we came in. It's your name we pray. And everybody said, and everybody said, come on, can we get up for Jesus in this place? We're thankful that he's here. That's the reason why we are here. Have you ever used something the wrong way? Have you used something the wrong way? And uh, right now, uh, my son Oliver, he just turned eight months on, I believe it was Saturday. Eight months on Saturday. He is growing. He is becoming more active. And because he's getting more active, like people ask me, like, DJ, like, what can he do now? Like, can he crawl? Can he talk? And I said, well, first of all, he's a fully devoted follower of Jesus. He's at church every single Sunday. He knows, he knows about three or four Bible verses, at least I think. I mean, I feel like spe people speak other languages. I don't understand. He's babbling, so he's probably got his own little language. He's probably talking about how much he loves Jesus. I'm not 100% sure, but I, that's just my guess because I don't understand what he's saying yet. But he's, like, learning different things, which is really cool to see him pick up stuff, learn things. And, like, people ask me, like, hey, can he crawl yet? And I'm like, yeah, he can crawl, but, like, he doesn't do, like, a classic, like, boom, 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 boom. It's not like you're just going to see him on the ground, he's going to do a sprint. It's kind of like a three-step, you know. It's like, boom, 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 fall forward. Gets a little farther, and he kind of gets back up, boom, fall forward. You know, like, regardless, like, no matter if, whether he can, like, fully crawl or not, he knows how to get anywhere. If I left him in this room, he could just be outside, and you'd be like, I don't even know how you did that. You know what I'm saying? But he's kind of at the stage now where, like, if we leave him somewhere, obviously we're watching him, and maybe I'll, like, be brushing my teeth or something. Like, if he's making noise, like, it's fine. But if he's not making noise, I'm like, bro, what are you up to? Like, what are you doing? Why are you not making noise? Is that because you're doing something sneaky? He's really into, like, power outlets. That's, like, his thing. And I don't know what it is about, like, a plastic thing in the wall. But power outlets are dangerous, man. Like, you know what kind of power you can get through a power outlet? I mean, that thing charges a lot of different things by putting in your, something into it that powers, like, so many different things. And Oliver right now, he's just fully drawn to touching power outlets. You're like, DJ, you're a terrible parent. Why? No, I'm not saying I've let him do it. I'm saying he looks at it, and he's like, reaches for it. He could be in any room, and for some reason, he'll direct himself towards the power outlet. However, Oliver, as he's learning these different things, he does not realize that if he were to touch that enough, that he has a chance that it would hurt him. Because the power that can come from the power outlet is beneficial only when you use it the right way. However, if you were to take the same thing, use it the wrong way, and say, he goes, it can hurt you really, really bad. So I want to let you guys know tonight that you can only receive the most out of something when you use it how it was designed. You can only get the most out of something when you use it how it was designed. And tonight we're in our third week of our series called Holy Ghost. And last week we talked about how the fruit of the Holy Spirit and like the things that you whack, the way that you behave, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness... Either your abundance or lack of that determines whether or not you're actually being led by the Spirit. The first week, we talked about the different roles between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And you can even check those out on YouTube. But depending on what you need, depending on the things that you're needing in your life, is the person or the thing that I will go to in order to receive what I need. And so I think that for some of us, we're using the Holy Spirit in the wrong way. Maybe we just put, and what we tend to do is put the Holy Spirit, we tend to put God in a box. Like, God, he, he just, he's just going to be with me if I need help. He just is there to bless my food so that I don't get food poisoning. He's just going to be there so that, so, you know, ju he's just going to be there that I need to make big decisions. What college am I going to go to? But I want to let you know that just because you put him into, if you put God into a box, that's as much as you're going to get out of him. That the Holy Spirit's available to you in so many different ways that we just haven't had access to it yet. But what we talked about in the first week is that the function of the Holy Spirit ultimately is a helper. Jesus said that when he left 
The Holy Spirit is now here and he's left to help us. And as I, as I was kind of thinking and praying about what to talk about in this series and kind of the different elements of the Holy Spirit, I was really drawn to this word, helper. The Holy Spirit as a helper. And so the reason why, uh, that, I mean, we talked about this, but like there's different versions of the Bible that kind of maybe say one thing, but it says it in different ways. And so I was looking at the different versions of the Bible and how it would even describe that same exact word, helper, which is what I saw in the NIV, which in some other translations, some of it says helper, other ones say advocate, He's got the, 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 that God has, Jesus has given us the advocate in the Holy Spirit. And another version, which was interesting, is that it says comforter, which if you look in the original language that it was written, is that you'll find that comforter is one of the most accurate words to describe the Holy Spirit as he relates to us. And just like the first verse in verse 3, it says this verse we just read, it sounds really nice. It's, he's the God of all comfort. And I don't know about you, but like, I, I really like, like comfort. comfort. You know what I'm saying? Like God's bringing us all kinds of comfort. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like to be comfortable. You know what I mean? Like one of my favorite things to do when I get home is to put some shorts on, you know, like kind of get a blanket, maybe just watch a little TV before I go to bed. You know what I'm saying? Like, we enjoy being comfortable, which I think like for many of us in our whole lives, that's what we're seeking, is we're, we really desire to at some point in our lives be comfortable. And if you think about it, a lot of us desire at some point, us, yes, we want to have purpose, yes, we want to make a difference, but ultimately we would like to one day live comfortably. I mean, is that true? One day, like, I don't want to have to worry about bills. I don't want to have to worry about all these, these de debts that I have to pay. I don't have to worry about this. I just want to be comfortable. So maybe you're grinding right now. You know, you're working hard. You're making the dollar dollar bills. And what keeps you going is the fact that you hope that maybe one day you'll build up your wealth. You'll build up your relationships. You'll build up your connections to where you don't really have to work anymore. You may want to work, but you don't have to work anymore and really start to really enjoy your life. Like, like the American dream now is like to retire at age 55 and now you don't have to do anything. I'm like, who made that up? Like who made up that all of a sudden we're just going to retire and not do anything? I'm like, I want to keep going. I want to keep going until I die. That's why Pastor Rich and Robin, I think, are so young. Even though Pastor Rich is like almost, he always says he's 100. I think he's almost like 70 or something. They seem younger than they ever have is because they continue to have purpose. God's moving them forward. It's like they don't have an arrival point. They don't have a destination. God's, God's, uh, God's with them, and they're alive. They're breathing. They're active. That's why they seem so young. So you got the, you know, I'm saying, like, for, for a lot of us, we want to live comfortable lives. You know what I'm saying? Like, we get to a place where, we're, you know, our passive income is just rolling in the account. You know what I mean? We bought the, our six different properties that our goal was. We got our business running. You know what I mean? Like we got our people in place. And we just kind of like check in every once in a while. And then finally, you know, maybe we just have like a few maintenance calls. But you get to a place where you're finally living the dream. Oh, man, just get to the place. I don't have to worry anymore. I'm living the dream. And I'm not saying those things are bad. In fact, use the gifts God's given you. If you have a business mind, do it. If you have an entrepreneurial mind, 100% go for it. But I want to encourage you tonight that you do not have to wait to live the dream. In fact, with Jesus, there's no arrival point because he's always with you. What more do you need in this life than the presence of God? What more do you need than his approval? Him saying, I love you, that the creator of the universe designed you and created you for a purpose. That with God, you can have nothing and still have everything you need because he's given it all to you already. For some of us, it's not a matter of reaching out. It's about digging deep to the person that God has already called us to be. That he's already inside of us. We already have what we need. But how many of you, man, how many of you are thankful for the Holy Spirit? How many of you are thankful for his work in your life? Some of us were like, I don't even know if I'd be alive if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? He's already done so much. But our culture has taught us to reach for a place so that we can be comfortable. Reach, get to that place, get to that goal, and then you'll finally be 
comfortable. And yes, of course, we want to make a difference, work hard, but it's like, I, think, I think it would be nice for us to just work, maybe th- what culture tells us is just to work on our own terms, where you wouldn't, be, you wouldn't work out of need, but you'd be working out of want. And I think in the Bible, when we talk about God being a comforter, the Holy Spirit being a com- comforter, we can mistake that for this word comfortable. Even read Psalm 23, Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He guides me along the, the right path for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Thank you, God. I'm all good. I'm fine. But if we take that word comfort and we turn it into something that's comfortable, we're never going to walk into what God wants us to do. But I want to propose to you tonight that when it comes to the Holy Spirit being your comforter, There's a difference between being comfortable and being comforted. There's a difference between sitting back and relaxing and moving forward by faith. There's a difference. But our goal here tonight is to walk us through what it means to be comforted by the Holy Spirit and how that can help us. Are you ready? If you're ready, say, I'm ready. ready. Number one is the Holy Spirit will comfort you so that you can comfort others. The Holy Spirit will comfort you so that you can comfort others. Verses 3 through 4, it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion, the God of all comfort. Check this out. Who comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. We are comforted so that we can comfort others. In the Bible, you'll see commands for you to comfort others, and you'll see promises that God will comfort you. You will never see it where you should comfort yourself. You'll never see it. It's I'm designed to help serve other people, help them. God comforts me, and that's it. That's where my source is. And just like, I mean, I love, just love talking about it. Is it okay if I just say one more story about Oliver? I promise this is the last one. And honestly, even if you said no, I'd probably still say it anyway. So, but Oliver in this, is in this stage where, like, he's learning his cries. Like, there are diff- because he can't talk, he knows that there are different cries for different things. And he knows that, like, in certain cries, like, he'll know will come. You know what I mean? So it's for us now we're trying to decipher like his kind of game plan, you know. Like are you crying because you really need something or are you crying just because like you just want like some attention. You know what I mean. Now obviously we're always there for him. There's no like lack of love at all. We're always there. But at the same time there is like this little bit like let me just watch him for a sec. You know what I'm saying like what's the move, what's the play here. Because like Oliver does things sometimes we're like, I'm not saying this is exact situation. But he'll like, you know, he'll be sitting down. And then there'll be a pillow next to him, and he'll kind of tip over and fall on the pillow. And then he just starts crying. And you're like, dude, I really don't think that that hurt. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I really don't think that hurt. I want to be their dad. I want to comfort you. You know what I'm saying? Crystal, obviously, she's amazing. She's always, like, there, there, there. But for me, I'm like, come on, bro. Like, let's figure this out. Like, I'm one-on-one, falls on the pillow, and I'm like, hey, you're like, ha, ha, ha. And so what I, and the thing is, is like he's trying to like play me like he's got a certain cry. I'm like, dude, I know your cries too. You know what I mean? I know if you're screaming like bloody murder, like obviously I'm coming. <laughs> I'm like, dude, it's fine. Like you're going to be okay. Bro, you can't fool us. But we're trying to convince him. That, like, dude, you fell on a pillow. Like your pain's not as bad as you think it is. So what would happen is he gets up and he kind of looks at us for our reaction, you know. Like if we're... Like this, he's going to cry more. But we try to, like, when he turns to me, buddy, it's okay. You're okay, buddy. Like, you can do it. Come on, champion. Come on, buddy. Like, you're awesome. You're strong. You're a big boy, you know. And all of a sudden, you know, he's, like, all happy and everything. I'm like, yo, let's go, you know. But we're we're trying to smile and encourage him because we don't want to let the fall deter him from his purpose. Like the purpose that he has is just to learn and to grow and to touch things and to move. And his sensories are still alive. He's still like absorbing the world. It's really cool to even try to see the world through his eyes. Which we try to like give him toys and these different things to start exploring the world around him. In the same way, we will experience pain 
And we want to cope with that, plan, that pain in the way that we see fit. And often we want to find ways to comfort ourselves. We want to find ways. I mean, let's just be honest. We got comfort foods, man. We got comfort foods. I got this new trail mix from Target. Ooh, it is next level, bro. I'm just like, anytime, I'm not, maybe not even stressed. It's just like normal eating. I'm like, I love this. Is, this trail mix is amazing. But we have comfort credit cards. We have comfort friends that are good to us but not good for us. Like we all cope with pain differently. And I, and I don't think that we want to go back to the relationship. I don't think we want to go back to the drug or anything else. I, I think it's difficult to know where to go when you don't feel like there's anywhere else to go. Like pain of any sort can feel like you're just like drowning, you know. And like it, I don't know if you ever actually felt like you're going to drowning before. Like I'm like kind of scared of the ocean because like it just feels like it's just taking over and I'm like there's so many waves and like what's going on, you know. But like. When there's, when there's things hitting you, if you feel like you're drowning, you're just kind of like, kind of just going crazy, and you're just grabbing onto the first thing that can give you flotation. You know what I'm saying? And you hope that even for a moment, that feeling comfort will relieve it in some way. Like if I can just grab onto this just for a moment, that it could relieve the fact that I literally felt like I was going to die. I didn't know where else I was going to go. And it's in that moment, that feeling of comfort, whatever you grab onto, where you're hoping that it will be greater than the pain that you're experiencing. If I could just hold this, my covers in, if I could just hold my pillow, if I could just eat this snack, if I could just do this, if I could just hold on, everything's going to be okay. And maybe you're, you're heartbroken and there's the comfort of a blanket and the, or the couch or the snack or the TV that can distract you from how bad it really hurts. I mean, and We've all been there before. We've all experienced pain and hurt, and we didn't know where to go. But I don't want, just want to temporarily cover the pain. I need a solution. I need an antidote. I need the real solution. I need some real comfort where the world changes, where my feelings change day to day. I need something to stand on. I need something to live by. I need a good foundation. I don't just want a floaty. I want solid ground. I don't just want a little floaty when the river's going super fast. I want to be able to get to land. That's what I need. But in order to understand this comfort, we need to be reminded that anything God gives you is also designed to benefit others. Anything that God gives you is also designed to benefit others. We talk, Yolani talked about that in her offering verse. God is going to give you more when he knows he can trust that you're living a life with open hands. Understand, God, you're going to give a lot so that I can be more generous. It's the same principle even when it comes to our emotions and when it comes to God comforting us. Because God calls to use us. We're his handiwork. We're his vessels. We're his workmanship designed to be used by God, for God, to bless this world and the people around us. That's why. God, Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Why did you come? So that you could then be just be filled and all oh, great, I'm full, I feel good, man, I'm happy all the time, I'm joyful all the time. But why are you happy? Why are you joyful? Why do you have the money that you do? Why did God give you that house? Why did God give you that car? Why? And when you discover the why, you'll realize that God did these things so you can better serve others. It's important to understand this because your testimony is going to be used to help other people too. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We can do that by asking ourselves, God, will you work in my situation so that this can be used to bless others? What is your why? You have a prayer request. You're asking God for something, but why do you want it answered? Be honest. Because if you go to the why and you realize, I, I really just want more money so I can get a bigger house. And you'll wonder why maybe those prayers aren't answered in the timing that you are the, the, they're being answered how you want them to be. That God's like, why am I going to give this to you? Secondly is that spiritual comfort will often come from discomfort. 
spiritual comfort will often come from discomfort. So I'm going to read from the, the, a book, uh, the book of Mark, Matthew, Mark, second gospel. But here's the story of Mark where Jesus had started his ministry and called his first disciples, and he takes them to a synagogue. This is literally, the verses before are like, he's calling Peter, James, Andrew, John, like, all right, come follow me, and then boom, goes to the synagogue. And he says they went, this is verse 21, it says they went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who has authority, not as teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I, knew you, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of them. And the impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a streak. Now, I, I've had some stuff happen to me. Like, I understand, like, some people, like, might walk out, you know, during a sermon or might, babies might cry or someone might say something weird. I've never had this happen before. I hope that it doesn't, but, hey, I'll be ready if it does. But I've never had someone shriek out, like, shriek out in demon possession in the middle of the service. I mean, I... Uh, that would be like, that would be wild. And this is exactly what happens to Jesus. And what's most interesting about this passage, if, you pay, if, you, if you're able to look at it closely, was that the man was in the synagogue. The man who was possessed, he was possessed by a demon. He was possessed by an evil spirit. It says, a man in their synagogue. Meaning that this dude, it wasn't his first time in the synagogue. That he must have been some sort of, I don't know how they did membership class. I don't know if they had a growth track. But this dude's been through growth track, okay. This dude's been to the hype. He's been a growth track. He's been in everything, okay. And he had an evil spirit inside of him, but no one knew. There was dysfunction on the inside, but he looked good on the outside. Oh, this guy, Jimmy, dude, he's a great member of the church. Welcome to our synagogue. He's a great prayer. He leads the congregation sometimes. He has his own connect group at his house. Did you know that it's really easy to fake that you're doing really well? You know what I'm saying? I think we've all been there. You know what I'm saying? It's easy to put a face on, you know, to listen and to take notes and to shout back. and be like, oh, yeah, praise God. But then it's really easy also just to, like, leave the same person. It's really easy. However, what can happen in our lives is we experience pain or hurt or anything negative, and we, if we choose, we choose to live comfort, comfortably, and then it, that's how we cope with our pain. So we get comfortable with our dysfunction to where now what we experienced is totally okay. I've just learned to live with the hurt. I've just learned to adjust to the pain. I've created a shell over my heart, and this is why you may act out or speak out or be the way that you are or think the way that you do is because you have something rooted inside of you that you've chosen just to choose comfort. Whenever it arises, whenever it gets big, you're just going to go back to the very thing that it started with, which I chose comfort instead of the Holy Spirit. It's because it becomes easier to live with it than trying to get out of it. It's easier to do that. I don't have to actually confront it. I don't have to face it. But did you know that sometimes the proof of the Holy Spirit in walking and moving in your life is discomfort? I mean, does, have you been like convicted before where you know you did something bad? Wait, did that feel great? Where you're just like, <laughs> I just feel so convicted. No, it's like, oh, it's like, Maybe you've ever heard a message before, you know. I kind of see people sometimes where they kind of get a little, whoa, you know. Sit back in your seat a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It's because the Holy Spirit's working. Like the abs you want require discomfort. I mean, those planks be hard, man. That's all I'm saying. The grades you want, discomfort. Hey, the money you want, discomfort. The relationship you want, I thought it was all happy and joyful and we can just kind of mess around. Discomfort. 
I've never heard a testimony where someone was like, my life was great, rolling in the dough, had a family, five kids, I was super joyful and happy, and then I just heard the announcement, got baptized, and I love Jesus now. Like often it was because there, there was something going on. Some of you have been there. You know you've been to the deepest depths. You've hurt. And it was because you were down there in the depths, in the valley, where you felt like, man, you hear that valley, the shadow of death. Yo, that was me. I was down there. But God met me there. It was uncomfortable. It hurt. I was in pain. But it was exactly in that pain where God met me. He showed me who he was. He revealed to me that I really need him. That I can't do it without him. It was friction. It was something to designed to get you out of something. It was designed to get something negative out of me to let the Holy Spirit work inside of me. Because you can say I'm a believer, but it doesn't mean you've given over your life. And you'll find that every time you face friction is really the other piece trying to get out. And what you're doing is you're trying to like hold it back in with patches and band-aids and holding it in. When God's continually trying to take it out and God's actually working in your life and he's trying to show you, I need that thing out so I can get in. He needs to. But if we stay comfortable, we won't change. If we stay comfortable, we won't be who God called us to be. So if we aren't careful, we'll associate the enemy with discomfort and God with comfort. That God is good just because of the bonus. He's good just because of the vacation. He's good just because I got this guy or the girl that really like me. When often, God wants to stretch us. God sees where you can be and who he's called you to be and where you are. And the only way to get you to that place is to get you in places where you're uncomfortable. Faith is uncomfortable. Growing is uncomfortable. Getting stronger, building character, getting wiser, these are things that are uncomfortable. You mean God will allow troubles in my life? I literally have that in my notes. Absolutely. Think of the man in the synagogue. Think of him. He's fine. He's doing great. He's checked off all the boxes. He's got the cross chain necklace. You know what I'm saying? He's got the posts on Instagram. He set it up with the, I don't know if this particular Jimmy, if he was a coffee kind of guy or like a donut and tea kind of guy, but he had all the scriptures on his Instagram. He had all the captions good. But he was living with an evil spirit inside of him. I'm not saying that everyone has an evil spirit inside of him, but we can kind of just label that as some sort of dysfunction. Like there's some sort of dysfunction going on in the life of, of where you know you need to be. And everyone knows what theirs is, hopefully, that God's revealed it to you. But it wasn't until he had an encounter with Jesus. When a little chaos took place, when a little friction took place, he was fine in every other church service, but Jesus showed up and all of a sudden this demon's shrieking, he's going crazy, and you can imagine being him like, well, what's going on? And just shriek this thing coming out of him. You think, well, that, that must be the enemy. Really? The enemy was trying to keep at peace and calm. The enemy was just trying to behave and just chill and kind of make his little moves. It wasn't until it got loud, until it got crazy, until the little disruption before God could take the evil that was inside of him out. Me for you, you just need a little disruption. You're getting a little bit too comfortable. A little bit too comfortable. But just because it's, it's, it's not comfortable doesn't mean it's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's trying to get you in uncomfortable situations. When you hear the word connect group, I have to talk to people. I thought I was just kind of sitting down. What, oh, man, getting involved. Like there are things that God's trying to take out of you and it's giving an opportunity. And sometimes that discomfort is a sign that, hey, Holy Spirit's working. And band, you guys can come up. My last observation is this is that it's either comfort or calling. It's either comfort or calling. It's either comfort or it's calling. You can choose. 
the enemy wants us to run towards comfort. Because if he gets to run towards comfort and covering under what we think is good for us, then we can get outside of our calling. Because if God's, if I'm here and God's called me to do this, and if I'm stretching and growing, he's like, no, I, w- I want you to stay there. I want that thing to stay inside of me. I want that behavior to stay inside of me. He says, if we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If you're distressed, if you are distressed, if you are distressed, it's for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you a patient endurance of the same suffering we suffer. And our hope for you is firm because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. There's a difference between being comforted and being comfortable. And it takes you being uncomfortable to find what you actually need. It takes you getting out of your comfort zone. The same word comfort is here in Psalm 1950. It says, remember your word to your servant, for you have given me hope that my comfort in my suffering is this, your promise preserves my life. And I'm not saying that that God will ever leave you. In fact, the Bible says that he'll never leave you or forsake you. So whether you choose to live comfortably or being comforted by the Holy Spirit doesn't determine whether or not God's going to be with you or not. What I'm saying is, is that the Holy Spirit is with you to comfort you for what you need. Saying, DJ, then that's super confusing. What's the difference between the Holy Spirit comfort and me being comfortable? What's the difference? Are you saying that God wants me to live uncomfortably? Are you saying God wants me to live at this constant state of uneasiness or anxiety? The word... The word comfort that this is used in this passage is talking about, yes, like a soothing type of empathy. That's one thing to where it almost kind of feels like a hug. Almost feels like this Holy Spirit kind of hug that kind of gives you that peace. That's one aspect of it. But another aspect of it is that it gives you strength and it gives you encouragement. That there's there's something that you need when you are distressed that you cannot receive from the comfort that you're looking for. So it's almost that you need, if you feel like you need comfort, you need to get uncomfortable. Because if I'm uncomfortable, then I know I can walk into my calling. And the reason why, for a lot of us, it can be uncomfortable is because it's something we haven't done before. There becomes a part where you can kind of build a habit where I know as soon as, I, if, as soon as I'm in distress, as soon as I'm hurting, as soon as I'm in pain, my first response is to go to the Holy Spirit. God, I need your help. And that becomes a normal part of your life. But for a lot of us in this room, it's, it's, a, it's a muscle we have to work out. And what the Holy Spirit does is not only does he give you that restorative process, he's like, listen, I'm going to comfort you. I'm going to give you everything that you need right now in this moment. The Bible says, blessed are those who mourn, okay? I'm not saying God's just saying get over it and move on. What I'm saying is is that there is a certain process by which God calls us to grieve or hurt or in pain. It's saying stop going to the things you know brought you there in the first place. If you keep going back to the same relationship or the same addiction or the same behavior... You're going to get the same results, and you'll find it's only temporary. But when you come into the Holy Spirit, and simply all that means is just getting on your knees. Instead of laying on your bed, just get on your knees. And all you got to do is ask God, say, Holy Spirit, I need your help right now. I can't do it. The Holy Spirit doesn't force himself upon you. He doesn't just all of a sudden, boom, you're infused. And man, I'm just a joyful person now. I'm just a happy person. That's not how he works. It's a both and. He's saying you have to take the effort to step forward and get uncomfortable. Get on your knees. Call on my name and I'm going to meet you right where you're at. I need a little something from you. So you have to decide when I'm in a place where I can't go any further, when I've had enough, when my pain is too great, 
when my depression is too great, when my anxiety is too great, where are you going to turn to? And it's saying, Holy Spirit, I need you in this moment. And what the Holy Spirit does, not only does he comfort you, but he encourages you and strengthens you. So what happens is instead of having a situation that is a, is a broken heart for years to come, as you look to the comfort of the Holy Spirit, not only is there, is there a heart that's being mended, but there's also an encouragement and a reminder of who you are. And that's exactly the thing that we need in order to continue with the pains that we face in this life. When Oliver, when Oliver falls down on, his, on a pillow, or maybe he actually is hurt. Maybe he, he falls down and he's not feeling so good. What I want to do is I want to hold him. I want to rub his head. I'm going to, whatever part that, that hurt him, and I, I just want to hold him tight. I want to tell him it's okay. Everything's going to be fine, buddy. It's cool. But then for me to just hold on to him for the next three hours when he's okay, it just doesn't make sense. The reason, why I'm comfort, the reason why I'm comforting him is so that I can place him back to where he was before. And God, what he's trying to do is he's trying to restore your heart and restore your mind so you can get back to the mission that he's called you to do. It's not just for you. It's for others as well. He wants to use you. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? Maybe you're in this room and you just need Holy Spirit comfort. Maybe you've been in a place where instead of looking to the Holy Spirit to be comforted, I've been kind of doing it my own way, and I've really sought to be comfortable. That the, maybe it was the credit cards. Maybe it's the, the friends that you know you're not supposed to go to. Maybe it's, the, maybe it's the snacks. Maybe it's the TV. Maybe it's work. Maybe it's money. Whatever. We all have our own things. But we've searched for comfort in something that cannot replace what the Holy Spirit wants to do in our lives. So there are a couple people in this room, maybe that's you, you're like, DJ, I just need to get back on track. I need to, instead of going to my comfort, I need to go to the ultimate comforter. And the second group of people is maybe you don't even know who the Holy Spirit is and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, that you will be saved, that really in order to have the Holy Spirit, that access of Him being your comforter, all you need to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart because Jesus already did the work. The reason why we even have access to the Holy Spirit is because Jesus decided to get out of His comfort zone, out of heaven, to come down to us to live a perfect life and sacrifice His life for us. So if that's you in this room, one of those two people, and on a, on a count of three, I would encourage you just to lift up your hand. And to lift up your hand is just saying, listen, I'm with you. I need the Holy Spirit right now. On the count of three, one, no one looking around. Two, it's one of the biggest decisions that you'll make. Three, would you just lift up your hands? I include you in my prayer. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hand in the back. I see your hand. And I see your hand. You guys can put your hands down. I'll give you five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, would everyone just stand up in this place with me just for a moment? We just want to sing this song together and just talking about the power of your presence. And this song, I love this song because it's talking about, I, want, I need the Holy Spirit to fall afresh on me. I need to re- Him to restore places that have been broken, places that maybe even you're in this room and you've been seeking for comfort for years and years to come. This is not just like something that happened last week. This is something that happened maybe a decade ago. It's something that you still have been struggling with and need the Holy Spirit to restore you right now in this moment. And I want to let you know that He is available to you whatever way that you need Him to. If you only thought He was going to help you go where to college, then that's what He's going to help you to. If you believe right now in this moment that He can heal you, He can heal your heart, He can heal your mind, He can renew your spirit to give you a greater passion for this life and for Him, He's going to do it for you. So whatever you need to do, let's lift up your hands and praise Him. Let's sing this song together. Let's believe that He's here in this room. Come on. That changes us, glory all around us, and we run. Open up the heavens, fall afresh on.
maybe you're making that decision for the very first time. I want everyone just to repeat this prayer after me. This is just so that if someone's making this decision to follow Jesus for the very first time, that no one feels alone. So just repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Jesus, I've sinned. I've sinned. I'm not proud of it. I'm not proud of it. But I admit it. But I admit it. Tonight, Jesus, Tonight, Jesus I lay my sin down. I lay my sin down. Take it, I pray. Take it, I pray. I don't want it anymore. I don't want it anymore. I reach to heaven. I reach to heaven to receive your forgiveness. To receive your forgiveness. To take the place of my sin. To take the place of my sin. And I ask, and I ask that you accept me. That you would accept into your wonderful family. To your wonderful family. Tonight, Jesus, Tonight, Jesus I give my life. I give my life completely to you. Completely to you. I'm yours. I'm yours. God, I thank you for every person in this room. God, even for people who raise their hand that are like, I need more of you. I pray that we would leave this room differently than when we came in. God, that when we experience pain, we experience hurt, something that we don't want to deal with. That we wouldn't run to be comfortable, but we would run to the comforter. The one who's going to help us ultimately with where you can shape us into the person that you've called us to be. God, we thank you. We praise you. We love you. And it's your name we pray. We all said, amen, amen, amen. Wait, well, hey, so thankful you guys came tonight. A couple of reminders for you. Uh, number one is this is just the beginning. So this week is the start of connect groups. Can we just throw that slide right back up on the back of the screen? Uh, these are going to be specific rendezvous groups. So listen, if you're looking to talk about, oh boom, there we go. If you're looking to take what we just talked about in this message and you're like, I want to break this down more. I want to have conversation about it. I want to talk about it. What you can do is if everyone can just take out their phones just for a moment. I'm not saying you got to sign up right now, but I'll make sure that you have them. All you got to do is you got to see the top is text connect groups. That's one word, connect groups to 66866. Once you do that, you can search rendezvous at the top, and those three will show up. There's a women, uh, women and men both on Thursday night, and then a co-ed on Saturday. I encourage you to be a part of a community. Maybe you're like, those times don't work for me. Oh, man, I don't even want to talk about this message. Whatever it is, just get it plugged into the community. There's 30 groups on there when you text connect groups at 66866. But if you didn't make that decision for the very first time tonight, you can take that card, bring it out to the connect tent out in the lobby. We love just to connect with you and let you know that we're with you. You can also, there's a physical card. Maybe you want to fill out the connect groups form that way too. That's amazing. But either way, love you so much. Remember, we're back next week continuing our series, Tacos from 6 to 7. The high up at 7 o'clock, you're going to want to be there. But lift your hands as I bless you out. God, I thank you so much from those wonderful people in the whole wide world. The rendezvous at Trinity Church. I pray that you would bless your people when they rise up, when they lie down when they go out and they come in. Bless them in their labor and in their leisure. Surround them with your Holy Spirit, believing that the rest of this week would be the best of this week. Keep your people safe, healthy, and strong in this season. And it's your name we pray. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Love you so much.